Hello, everybody. Welcome to our very special webinar. There I am. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to this very special webinar um, for our uh, school holiday season um, here in lockdown. Very sad. Oh. Um, but we are. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, but we have a very special uh, guest for you all tonight. Uh, Professor Lisa Harvey-Smith will be joining us in just a second. But before we get started, I just wanted to welcome you all to Science Space. Um, we are doing some virtual things for you at the moment. I am coming to you all from Dara World Country at the moment here in Wollongong. Um, and we are about to get underway with our question and answer night. Um, if you want to type in some questions, if you've got anything that you're really, really burning to know about our universe, um, about how to get started in astronomy, about some of the planets, um, anything like that, type your questions away in the Q&A se uh, section down there and we will um, get started and uh, yeah, we'll answer those questions as best we can. I say we, probably not me. Um, by the way, I'm Jo. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> I have the pleasure of working here at Science Space, and I'm going to be your MC and um, planetarium driver tonight. So we'll see how we go. Um, I want to introduce our guest. Enough from me. Um, she is an award-winning author, an astrophysicist, and she's also the Australian Ambassador for Women in STEM. Um, please put your hands together wherever you are um, and give a very warm welcome to Professor Lisa Harvey-Smith. Hello. Hello, hi everyone. <laughs> Great to be here. How exciting. Yeah, it's dark I'm... and we're ready to explore the universe. I like it. I know, I'm so excited. I just realized <laughs> I'm still sharing my screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, thank you so much for joining us. It's like so awesome great. to be here. Thank yeah. you. I've heard there's lots of people online. I've seen lots of people even writing questions already. So this is going to be know. really cool. How exciting is this? There's so many. Oh, so cool. Um, I just wanted to uh, see if you could just maybe tell us a little bit about, um, you know, where uh, where you work, what you look at at the moment, um, maybe some of the books you might have coming out very soon, that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, what is it about the universe that gets you so excited? Yeah, I've loved looking at the universe since I was about 12. Um, and even younger than that, actually, when I was six, um, there was a, a really cool event called Halley's Comet. And a comet yes. is like a thing that flies through the, the sky. It looks like um, it's got a kind of a, a bright head and then a tail that drags behind it. And it moves very slowly through the sky at night. And um, anyway, Halley's Comet is one of the really bright ones. And it zips around the um, sun every 76 years or so. And it came to the Earth in 1986. And I'm old enough that I remember 1986. So I was six years old then. And um, my dad said, let's go outside and look for Halley's Comet. The trouble is I grew up in England and it's always cloudy in England pretty much. So, oh, no. um, yeah, I didn't see Halley's Comet, but it was pretty exciting because, you know, a few nights later we, we went out again to see if we could see it. And we ended up looking at the stars quite a bit and, um, you know, figuring out what we could see up there. And, and um, you know, that became a bit of a, a passion of mine, something I really enjoyed. So I studied yeah. hard and uh, I went to university and studied astronomy and physics and astrophysics and um, I became a professional scientist who studies the stars and that's what an astrophysicist does so um, I've been doing that for now almost 20 years um, in jobs around the world in different countries looking through huge telescopes studying the stars and how they're born and how they die in our galaxy and looking yeah. at different galaxies far away as well so I've, I've worked in a lot of different fun places and and currently um, I'm at the University of New South Wales in uh, Sydney. You're not too far away from me that's cool um, also, um, Martin says not to feel too bad about Hall missing Halley's Comet in 86. <laughs> it wasn't its best year. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. But years later, I did see a really bright comet. In fact, I saw two. So if you wait, you'll, you'll, you'll be good. You'll be good. There you go. <laughs> so how did you kind of get started looking up? At the night sky because it's one of the questions that we get asked a lot here yeah it's yeah. it's weird i mean i've i've just written a book actually about that little book big universe now you can't see yeah. this because there you go and um it's a little book about how to look at the night sky so i yeah. wrote that because when i was a kid i kind of needed that book 
I needed it because mm. um, a lot of the books I was reading are a bit complicated. They had too much detail and they weren't really for kids. So, you yeah. know, I, I tried to read a lot of books. Um, I was a bit older when I was into astronomy, so that was easier. But but now yeah. we've got lots of cool books and things you can read online um, and also apps on your phone as well or yes. tablet. So you can look at um, a website called Stellarium. Stell, yes. Stella, meaning stars. And Arium, like planetarium. So it's kind of like a planetarium on the internet, which is really yeah. cool. And um, obviously you want to go and visit your local planetarium when you can in beautiful <laughs> <laughs> science space. But, you know, yeah. if you're in lockdown or stuck at home or something, or if it's cloudy mm. or whatever it is, you can look um, on the internet as well. So you can find out yeah. what you can look at and then find what the stars look like in different constellations, which are the yeah. shapes and groups in the stars. Oh, too. Actually, there's so much to talk about <laughs> i know there's too much we might actually be able to bring up some some stars because you mentioned oh, wow. planetariums brilliant i am actually sitting in our planetarium right now that's cool. um and we have this very very cool <laughs> um science space logo um it does get cooler i promise um, are we gonna look at some constellations first <laughs> yeah that's what i was <gasps> thinking let's do it okay hey hey joe there's a constellation yes. on the australian flag Yes, there can we is. Find that I think one? we can find that one. Yeah. Does anybody know what that one is? Do you want to chuck it down in the chat? Chuck it in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> now this might be an easy question for some of you, but there's a special little constellation. It's 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 an easy one to find because it's pretty much always visible unless you live in the very northernmost parts of Australia when it's just below the horizon for a couple of months. But it's oh wow. Well, Look let's at see this. if we can find it. Now you can Ooh. see there the Milky Way on the right hand side. You can see the sort of band of light and yes. dark. Let's go over and have a look. Our galaxy. That's beautiful. Oh. And we've got the emu. Now that's going around sideways because this is how the stars rotate all yeah. night. And, and we can try and, and find. Is that find. the pointers? <laughs> I think so. There oh, it no. is. <laughs> that's the pointers. You see. <laughs> This is the problem when you're not looking in the real night sky. There's just so many stars. It's really I hard. know. It's very hard. Gorgeous oh. though, isn't it? Looking around. Yeah. It's and there's beautiful. the Milky Way again. And in the middle of the Milky Way, there's this beautiful emu in the sky, which is a dark yes. emu, um, which is caused by the dust in our Milky Way galaxy, which is absorbing the light. So it's sucking up the light from the stars behind it before it gets to us so cool isn't it exploring yeah. the night sky yeah we we may be exploring for a little while hey um, i recognize I have... that i recognize that orange oh, oh. Star yes the Is one right in the center there the one in the beautiful constellation of scorpio yes so that oh, might be bring that one up bring that one up <laughs> hold on a second scorpio um nope oh gosh now there have you is. used this um Hey. There it is. Yes. There it is. That is so beautiful. It looks like a scorpion. It's kind of rubbish when yeah. you put the lines on, but in the real night sky tonight, you look up just above your head. This is kind of cool sickle shape um, mm. constellation or group of stars. And they're just imaginations about what they look like. They're not real animals, yeah. of course, in the sky, but yeah, really <laughs> beautiful. And it's, it's, there's this bright, bright orange star in the middle of that called Arcturus. And um, mm. you can see a lot of stars look white or blue, but, but some of them look orange or red and they're the cooler stars. Um, yeah. I don't mean they're cool, like fashionable, but they're, oh. they're actually colder. Because <laughs> <laughs> all stars are really hot, but you know, these ones are, are particularly cool. Yeah. Hey, um, I've got a question here from Jasper. Um, he wants to know what stars are made of. Brilliant. Okay. Mm. Um, well, they're not made of cheese because that's the moon, as you know. <laughs> But um, the stars are made of a gas um, and it's the lightest gas in the universe um, and it's called hydrogen. So hydrogen, uh, you might have heard of it, it's quite famous as a, a chemical. And um, yeah, most of the universe is made of hydrogen. And that hydrogen was mm. made in the Big Bang and it hung around and bits of it clumped together because gravity pulls things together and it made stars and it made um, all the stars. Uh, hydrogen is the most amazing thing because when it gets crushed together in a star um, bits of particles and atoms and stuff smash together and create helium 
So it actually yeah. joins together. And uh, that's how the star shines and creates energy and heat. Yeah, nice. I've just spotted something. Yes. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. I found it. <laughs> see, it's very small, isn't it? The Southern Cross. Yeah, it's hard to, it hard is. to see. But the pointers imagine. help because you can see those beautiful yes. two um, Alpha Centauri. I might be able to bring that up Centaurus. Yeah, that's cool. Sure. There it is. It's big, isn't it? Centaurus. Yeah. What's a centaur again? It's like a monster with a like a head, a funny yeah. horse with a head on it or something. I can actually we'll have to up, Google that one. Artwork as well. <laughs> so you might be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's, it's kind of like a horse with a man's head. A um, bit yeah. weird, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trinity and Indy say half horse, a half human. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Well done. There, we go. there on it. And Indy. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the Southern Cross, and that can help us find South as well. Mm. How do we do that? Oh, so you, you, you get the Southern Cross, and you imagine you like pinch it with your hands like that. So mm -hmm. close one eye and look and sort of pinch it, and then go down three, one, two, three, to the left-hand side yeah. below the cross. Uh, yeah. So it's actually to the left-hand side on the screen. So one, two, three lengths, and then yeah. go down to the rise, and that's South. So you can actually find right. you south if you're stuck in the bush or out in the ocean or something. Yeah, right. There grills it. Um, <laughs> you can actually find there you go. So that That's SCP yeah. is South Celestial Pole. So it means the South Pole of the sky. So the the North Pole yeah. and the South Pole of the sky. Because they don't Pretty quite cool. line up with the South Pole on Earth, do they? They don't. Well, there's sort of um, there's sort of magnetic poles, and then there's uh, spinning axis poles, and there's different ways of defining it. But um, yeah, and and the Earth sort of moves a little bit as it goes in its orbit around the galaxy. So it's always we're always pointing a slightly different direction. So thousands of years ago, the stars looked a little bit different yeah. directions, and today um, they look like they do today. So uh, yeah, it's always changing the it's night really sky. Cool. It's very cool. Yeah. We've got um, so many questions. I've shut I up. know. We've got a couple. Um, Eva wants to know why constellations are a thing. Yeah, because humans are, have imagination and humans for mm. thousands of years have sat at campfires and, and looked up at the stars at night. Um, you know, we've only had street lights and um, light bulbs have only been invented for, you know, 150 years or something like that. Before that, yeah. You know, there was no light at night and um, all people would do is look at the stars. So they would kind of imagine if you ever looked at the clouds and gone, that one looks like a rabbit or, you know, this one looks like a face or something funny. So people have done that through history and, um, you know, different people across the world call the stars different things. So the constellations aren't real. They're just an imagination of what the stars look like. Yeah, right. Um, how many of them are there? That was another question, I think, from Yeah, Evie. so there yeah. are 88 official ones but official is a bit <laughs> weird because that, that that doesn't really mean anything um mm. there's actually just hundreds and hundreds because different countries have different yeah. constellations and different uh, language groups and uh, you know indigenous australians would have had different groups that had hundreds of different constellations yeah. just in in this land so you know there's yeah. a lot of um like official doesn't really mean anything but there's 88 if you look it up in a dictionary yeah right okay that's really cool. There's actually way more. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other things that we can have a look at in the night sky if we look up? Oh, all oh, planets. We missed too many. <laughs> so yes. tonight, so if I look out my front door, or the, mm -hmm. actually the window, because the door's made of wood, but the window at the front, you can see Mercury and Venus. And then if really? you look in the other direction, you can see uh, Jupiter and Saturn. So we're actually right. got heaps of planets tonight and... Uh, that would be great to go and see one or two of those. Yeah, let's do it. Should we go and visit some? I think we have some questions about um, about some of the planets. Should we start with with something? Um, ooh, what's what's your favourite? Let's you let's start with Venus because it's so bright. You won't believe yeah. how bright it is. If you go out and look where the sun set um, mm -hmm. in that direction, there's a really really bright looking star, which is actually a planet, Venus, out towards um, the west, so that yeah, general right. direction. Um, and you can see it even before it gets dark. So when you go out after this session, have a look, look west. Um, and if you don't know which way is west, you can look on your phone, on your map, um, and you can take a look. Mm. Oh, we're going down near the horizon because planets yeah, here we go. sinking into the horizon. Can we zoom in? There it is. It's coming. 
All right. Woo! There we go. Whoa. <laughs> that, was a, that was a weird noise. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Venus. There we go. The first thing you notice about Venus, or that I notice, is it's covered in clouds. It's completely mm. covered. You can't see the surface. In fact, we only know what the surface looks like because we've sent spacecraft there to orbit the planet. And then they've done the back radar down to the ground and reflected it back off the surface to see how quickly it reflects back. So they can sort of make a map of the surface and see the mm. mountains and the valleys and stuff. But we can't see the surface at all because it's completely covered in clouds of mm. carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid and all sorts of nasties. So it's not yeah. a nice place to go. It isn't, isn't a nice place, is it? It's very, very hot. Yeah. The surface of <laughs> Venus is 471 degrees Celsius or centigrade. Oh, that's um, not very nice at all. <laughs> that's so hot it would melt metal, like melt lead. Imagine that. And the pressure oh on the surface of Venus is so great, it would crush yeah. a car just from the atmospheric pressure. So it's absolutely horrible place to go. Um, but it looks nice, so we can look at it, it in does. the sky and just um, be glad we live yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Trinity and India want to know how thick the clouds are on Venus. Yeah, well, the Venus is quite similar size to Earth. So the, the cloud, mm. the atmospheric layers are about the same as um, on planet Earth. So yeah, right. there's no real edge of the atmosphere, but it's kind of seen as space is about 100 kilometers up. But most of the atmosphere is within um, five to eight kilometers from the surface. So the clouds would be, you know, from a few hundred meters right up to a few thousand. Um, so, okay. you know, height of a mountain, that kind of thing. Yeah, right. So not too thick, but thick in depth. They're, 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 they're not too thick in depth, but they're, they're, yeah. they're really dense and they're made of yes. nasties. Um, and they also create a greenhouse effect. So carbon dioxide, as we know, is bad mm. in the atmosphere in too, mm -hmm. if you have too much of it. And there's too much of it in Venus and they've got a greenhouse effect. So they've got um, climate change has happened in the past and it's now nearly 500 degrees Celsius, which is, mm. is really not cool. Not good at all. Amelia says, um, doesn't it rain acid on Venus? It does. Yeah, very good. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll have seen the, the um, lovely drawing of that in my book, Under the Stars, oh, Ast yeah. Astrophysics for Bedtime. And there's a picture of an asteroid, on, uh, an astronaut on Venus. And she's, um, her boots are melting because it's so hot and it's yeah. um, cloudy with a chance of acid. Uh, oh. It's not, not very nice. No, it doesn't sound. <laughs> yeah, Eva's like, no, I don't want to go there. No, An you. umbrella wouldn't cut it. <laughs> no, not so much. <laughs> um, where else can we go? Oh, well, we can also see Jupiter tonight. That's really bright. So let's have a look yes. at that. Maybe. Alrighty. Let's that go. is one of the brightest things in our sky. After Venus um, sets in about, now you won't be able to see it anymore. And you look in the other direction, if you look east-ish and then look up really high, pretty mm. much overhead, you'll see Jupiter, which is... <laughs> really bright maybe not overhead but you you can find it it'll be the brightest yeah. thing in the sky then yeah yeah william says um he's ruling that out for ruling venus out for a holiday destination yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's maybe go that somewhere like mars yeah. first yeah 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 that's, that sounds sensible <laughs> so i saw a really good comment from someone saying venus has got no moons which is right um, but yeah. Jupiter's got a whole bunch of moons. I mean, they keep counting new ones. So it's like 79 or something. I don't know. It's a huge number. Oh, I think we're upside down. Oh, are we? That's weird. Well, there is no upside down in space. Well, that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and when you look for a telescope, it turns the image upside down. So, so we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. I think you can always make an excuse. <laughs> it's yeah. all good. So this is the back of Jupiter. You can just see the, the, the rings there. Very, very mm. thin, dusty rings. Um, and Jupiter's, of course, covered in cloud as well, but it's actually made of gas as well. So it's very yeah. different from Venus, which is made of um, rock, just like mm. the Earth is. But, but Jupiter does have a rocky core right at, right at the middle. Um, and I can see someone's asking a question about how old the planets are. Yeah, yeah. They're actually all the same age because they were all made together really? when the sun was made. Um, wow. So a huge cloud of gas in space. Um, started pulling together because gravity, as I said, gravity pulls everything together. Um, so that happened 4.6 billion years ago. 
So 4,600 million years ago. Um, it's a long time ago. Uh, yeah, and wow, the, the planets were, were created in, from this cloud of gas and the, the sun was, was made at the same time from the same cloud of gas and all the moons and all the comets and meteorites and asteroids and all the other cool stuff that we see yeah. in space. Um, it's, it's quite amazing. You just see those dusty rings again illuminated by the sun. It's just, it's there's like the sun in the background. Yeah, let's see if we can stop. I might be able to tilt it up and see if we can see them a bit better. Yeah. And you can yeah. see there that beautiful striping layers there it goes. Um, in the clouds and they're made of different types of gas and different temperatures of gas. And you can see there's the swirling <gasps> hurricanes and things like that. You can see the storm, the great red spot there, that big kind of squishy circle thing. Um, that's actually a huge storm. Look oh, at there that. it goes. Look at it go. <gasps> that's Isn't that cool. cool. Yeah. And that's how it actually looks. It actually rotates um, like yeah. that. Very, very cool. Yeah. They so all go just, in different directions too. It's fantastic. Yeah, there's um there's some weird motions in these in these planets. Mm. So it's you know, it's like on Earth there's trade winds and there's different belts of winds high up. They're called the jet streams. Um, yeah, so right. There's a lot of weird sort of wind motion. Even though the planets rotate in the same direction, the clouds yeah. can move in different directions. Um, so it's it's really exciting. Yeah. Wow! Look at that storm. Great red know, spot so there cool. again. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So good. Awesome. Oh, what planets have the weakest gravity? We've got an anonymous. Question. Yeah. Well, we can figure this out even without measuring it because hmm. gravity is caused by something having mass, and that means like how heavy it is, how much material it has in it. Like if you get a uh, like a small piece of play-doh and you make it into a ball then you get a yeah. giant one that big giant one has more gravity than the, the smaller one that's more attractive to you like you want to fall onto it um, that doesn't happen because small things don't have much gravity it's, you know it just depends on how much material how yeah. much stuff is in um, the object so in terms of the planets the smallest one is who says Pluto is still a planet? Maybe not. So it's, it's actually Mercury at the moment. So the smallest planet's Mercury. Um, and that has the, the lowest gravity, like the, the weakest yeah. gravity. And the, the biggest planet, the heaviest planet is Jupiter. We're looking at now. So that's got the strongest gravity. Um, and the Earth is somewhere um, in the low range. So it's, it's all dependent on how massive, how much bulk the planet yeah. has and that's that's what creates the gravity and you can get yeah. a bit more complicated about what causes gravity and the answer to that question which i saw is that we yes. don't actually know we're still researching that we know it's got something to do with the higgs boson and the higgs field potentially yeah, right. and the curving of space time but let's not get into that it's <laughs> too complicated and we don't know the answer we're still researching it um, maybe, but it's very exciting i saw that question before but maybe they can help um, later figure that out yeah. yeah. Um, Luke also um, wants to know why are Jupiter's auroras so bright? Compared yeah. To so Jupiter has auroras, right? It does. Yeah. So I've got an aurora behind it. That's what an aurora looks yes. like. Um, through a camera anyway. It's pretty black and white actually in the naked eye. But when you look through a camera, it's very colourful. And um, it, the aurora is caused by when the sun does a burp and then it's gas. Really, it's called a solar flare. And the gas goes out from the sun and it's really, really hot. And it's made of um, gas is atoms that's been broken up um, because they're very hot. And this gas is flying right. towards the earth. It hits our atmosphere and um, it's channeled to the north and south pole by the magnetic field of our earth. You know, the, the oh, field right. that makes the compass move point north and so south. That's why we can't see them from here because we're too far north, right? Well, we, you can see them from southern Australia. You can see them sometimes from uh, Tasmania, ACT, oh, really? um, oh, parts of cool. Victoria and, and WA. Um, yeah, right. But it's quite rare, yeah, because we're quite yeah. far north in Australia. So, um, But you can definitely see it from here occasionally. But, um, yeah, it's the, the, so the, the ingredients that make an aurora is the sun doing a burp, so that gas that flies out, and then also the magnetic field and the atmosphere. Right. 
the Jupiter's auroras are really strong because Jupiter has a very strong magnetic field and a lot of gas in its atmosphere. So they're really, really strong. And we can actually see them with our radio telescopes. So a radio telescope cool. is a, a kind of a dish of metal that points up to the sky and looks at, at uh, planets and stars and things. So we can actually make yeah. um, pictures of the aurora using those. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I actually, we've got um, another question here from Nick. What's the biggest planet? Yeah. We've done that. It's Jupiter. Right there. Yeah, it's there. Right there. <laughs> cool um, planet. Eva, yeah. Eva wants to know why some planets are closer and kind of further away from the sun. Yeah. Okay. So it goes back to when they were created in this cloud of gas. And the, and the cloud of gas in space was, was rotating around, spinning around. And when something spins around really fast, it gets flatter like a pancake. Mm. And um, that's what the gas did. And it flattened out into a pancake. And in the middle the heavy bits became the sun. And then further out, there were little clumps that became the planets as you go further out from the sun. Um, and there would have been lots of other planets that kind of collided with other bits and there would have been a lot of mess going on. But then that settled into the solar system that we see today. We know yeah. other planets collided because, I mean, we, we on the earth had a collision that created the moon. Now, the moon is actually something that, that got smashed off a collision with a, a minor planet, um, probably, four billion years ago or so yeah, right. and uh, venus is upside down it spins the opposite way to all the other planets so we know it must have had a huge collision early on in the solar system yeah right when you look at the moon it's covered in craters and that tells us that it was hit by huge meteorites again and again and again um, so we know in the past that the solar system was full of bits and pieces of rock and mm. uh, little minor planets that no longer exist because they've all collided to make the big planets that we see now yeah awesome so we, you were talking about the moon i'm just i'm just taking oh, you're going to the moon, the moon. Yes. yeah <laughs> i love just... the moon the moon is easy because you don't need a telescope actually you don't need a telescope to see venus or jupiter either but um the moon is really bright as we know mm. oh um sophia wants Here to know how old the sun is while well, we're just getting there yeah the sun is yeah just over four and a half billion years old, just like the planets. So that's that's incredibly old. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Mm -hmm. So the sun's 4.6 billion years old. So right. um, the universe is even older than the sun. Super And old. the universe is like the word for everything that exists. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. I can actually, I can bring that up in a second if you want to have an wow. observable universe. I know, it blows my Love mind. Love the moon. I look at it. But yeah, you can got it the right way up for Australia. Yeah, yes. Because often that's the thing, it's right? the other way up, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where I was born, yeah. it was the other way up. Ooh, so you're from the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, exactly. Nice. And we live like this. <laughs> Upside down. We actually have a, um, a really cool inflatable moon it's huge um oh, cool and when we bought it we weren't sure if it was going to be the right way around um but fortunately it was made by a southern hemisphere company so it's the right way so good so these are the craters i was talking about you can see yes. you can see two things you can see like dark patches mm -hmm. and light patches and the dark patches yes. are the the maria they're called and mm. maria is a, a word like an ancient latin word um for seas like the sea yeah, right. seaside um because the people 2000 years ago thought they were oceans because they didn't know yeah. they've never been to the moon now we've been to the moon we know they're not oceans it's a dry place but they're actually volcanic lava plains from volcanoes oh, cool. that were on the moon billions of years ago and the volcano spewed out lava and and, and that sort of ran down the volcano and and it dried into these amazing gray, dark gray plains. Um, yeah. So these are like hundreds of kilometers across. And um, yeah, they've all got different names, like the Sea of Nectar and the Sea of Crises, like, ah, and the Sea of Tranquility. <laughs> and you might've heard of that one. Mm -hmm. Sea of Tranquility. Know why that one is, is important. <laughs> Chuck it in the chat if you know. Yeah. And the other thing, apart from the Maria, is the, yeah, the craters. You can see that, maybe point to that one that at the top really middle there. One. It's huge. Yes. Um, and that's Tycho. That's called Tycho, which is named after a, 
a Danish astronomer who um, cut his nose off in a duel. Yeah, um, didn't he have a, um, something like that. a brass nose? He did. Yeah. <laughs> interesting prosthesis. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, you've got to make it fashionable. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah so <laughs> he was, um, yeah, he was an astronomer and uh, that crater was named after him. <laughs> yeah. Because they've all got names, uh, lots of interesting names for the craters. And you can explore the moon if you look on um, Google Moon which mm-hmm. is another website and you can go and zoom in just like Google Earth and you can look at the moon and the craters and explore yourself through. Yeah. Sorry, you're going to have to say that one one more time because um, I think you cut out a tiny I'll bit. I'll cut out. I'm sorry. Yeah. You no, you're to, okay. Look at Google Moon online yes. and it's just like Google Earth and you can explore the moon. Yes. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, great fun. Awesome. So, yeah. Oh, is there water on the moon from Louis? Louis. Well, if you'd asked me a little while ago, I'd have said, no, there's Mm. no water on the moon. But now they've discovered water on the moon. And it's um, in the form of ice under the um, North Pole and the South Pole and in craters. So the craters are like dips like that, like a big hole Mm -hmm. in the ground. And in a big hole, sometimes it's always in shadow. So you don't get the sunlight in there. And you know what it's like in a winter's day when you sit in the sun, it's warm. But if you're in the shade, it's like cold. And it's like that on the moon. So the the water ice is mostly under the the soil and in these craters where it's really cold. It's the same on Mercury, actually. There's water on Mercury, even though it's hundreds of degrees, like 200 and something degrees centigrade. It's there's actually water ice under the surface in the deep craters. So it's really interesting. Um, It can both be hot and have ice at the same time. Mm. Wow, that's really cool. It's hidden under a rock. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, actually, that's kind of, I heard somewhere that there was ice on Mercury. Is that kind of, and I think it might be because of a similar reason, right? Uh, yes, uh, it is. It's the, it's the deep craters. Again, some of the craters are so deep, they get, they get no sunlight at all if they're right by the, the North Pole. So definitely, um, you know, something interesting there uh, to think about. You know, could there be life on Mercury? Who mm. knows? There's water, there's gases escaping from under the earth, uh, from under the yeah. ground. It's very interesting. Just a quick second. Now, this is the back side of the moon, by the way, which um, we never see. It's called the far side of the moon. This gravity is um, sort of sticking, locking our planet together with the moon. Um, it always has the same face facing us. So we've never seen the back of the moon until the 1960s, I think it was, on just the start of the 1970s, when a Russian spacecraft flew behind the moon and gave us the very first pictures. And you can see the back of the moon is very different from the front. There are no seas at all. So no of these, none of these maria, these dark mm. sort of gray uh, lava plains from the volcanoes. And um, we think that's because, you know, gravity was pulling the lava towards mm. the earth. Really interesting. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. You don't often see the, the um, far side of the moon, do you? You don't see it. Uh, advertised because it's it's very secretive. Yes, <laughs> it is. It is very secretive. But there's still craters. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, oh, what's your favorite moon mission? Oh, you know one? well, you know, moon. yeah, interesting. Um, I have spent quite a lot of time with people who have actually walked on the moon, and I did mm-hmm. an Australian tour with Buzz Aldrin, um, who was the second oh person to walk on the moon. Uh, and we did shows in Sydney and Melbourne uh, a few years ago. And also with Gene Cernan, who walked on the moon in 1972. And he also flew to the moon um, in 1969. So there's just amazing. Um, mm. And then and then also with another astronaut who was on Apollo um, 15, uh, Charlie Duke. So my favorite, I think my favorite moon mission is probably the last one in 1972 apollo Mm. 17 because they actually drove a car around they had a buggy and they drove for miles like they they went right across the moon they got to explore for three days when neil armstrong and buzz aldrin went they only went for a few hours and then they went home but in the final moon missions they stayed for three days and that would have been really cool because they've left a whole bunch of stuff up there too right yeah it was just cheaper to um leave there and that's bad that's littering we don't do that but um they didn't know better in the 1970s so they left a bunch of um you know equipment and 
even some um, like toilet things um, up there. <laughs> so, you know, yuck. Um, yeah. you, you should never litter kids, never. <laughs> no. no, it's not good. <laughs> Leave things on the moon. That's not good. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've got a question here from Akeem. I think I'm saying that right. Why do planets have moons? Yeah, well, again, when the solar system was being formed and that's all the planets and, and moons and everything, it was really just a little bit of random clumping where, where the, the gas cloud that was rotating and flattening like a pancake was pulling together by gravity and made the sun and the planets. And it also pulled together to make moons. And it was just that the big planets had more gravity. So they started pulling the small planets around them in a kind of an orbit. Um, yeah. And it's, it's just all about gravity and how gravity organizes things so that they go in sort of not quite circular, but almost circular orbits. Um, so if you're near a, a big fat planet, you start to go, whoa, I'm falling towards <laughs> the planet. And then and you kind of move around in an orbit and you're saved. So that, that was kind of what happened. And yeah, right. um, lots of planets have moons, some, some don't. But uh, a bit of chance, actually, chance and gravity. Yeah, right. Um, oh, okay. This is a bit of a, a topic change, but I think this is a, I love this question. Um, so this is Erin, who's seven, and Lincoln, who's five. Um, they would like to know how they can become astronomers and go to the International Space Station. Fabulous. Okay, Erin, mm -hmm. and who was it? Lincoln. Lincoln, yeah, yeah. excellent. Okay, <laughs> so two things. Um, if you want to study the stars, you can do it anytime you want, and the best way to learn is to do it. So go outside, look at the stars, explore, read books about it, you know, have fun. And then study science and technology and maths and, and um, you know, learn more about um, science and how we figure stuff out about space because that's really exciting. Um, if you want to be an astronaut, um, at the moment, um, there used to be the case that you had to kind of be a professional astronaut and, you know, apply and be a pilot yeah. and something like that. But nowadays um, it's changing a little bit and they're taking some people who have other jobs. Uh, they might be a scientist, uh, they might be a doctor or something like that. And then they get to go on a space mission um, and it's not their full-time job. So you can do anything pretty much, but, but science and technology is probably the thing you want to do um, if you want to become an astronaut and visit the International Space Station. Because on the International Space Station, they do a lot of scientific experiments. So that's something you need to be good at and enjoy to find out new things and explore the world. Yeah, absolutely. Which I was just takes trying to us find... to the world. <laughs> yes, it does. I was just trying to find the ISS because we can we can bring it up. Oh, brilliant. But I can't find it. Oh, well, I can see, I... yeah. Yeah, I can There's turn India. on all of the satellites. There's, oh, <laughs> nice. So that's all of the satellites okay not, not exactly what i was looking for <laughs> well this is cool well they, they they're all the low earth orbit satellites so the international space station is quite a bit high you might have to zoom out yeah because it's um what is it 180 or something kilometers mm. up so it's pretty high um and there's a lot of satellites aren't there and what do yeah, they there's do a lot. that's an interesting yeah. question isn't it what do all those satellites do a lot of them are beaming things like internet and mobile phone signals and TV signals and like all sorts of communication. So when you use a phone or a tablet, something like that, you're, you're talking to space because they yeah. beam the signals right around the earth. Um, it's, it's very cool. Yeah, it is very cool. Yeah. yeah. And most of those satellites don't have people on them, but the International Space Station does. Um, and that's, that's a really exciting place where lots of people go and visit and uh, do science and learn about plants and how they grow in space and learn about the human body um, mm. and prepare for missions to the moon and Mars, which we're looking forward to in the next 10 years or so. So yeah, when definitely. you are all a little bit older, there'll be people going to the moon. You'll be perfect age actually for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll be you. Who knows? Um, speaking of, um, are there any exoplanets? This is from Alexandra. Um, are there any exoplanets that may support life? And if so, how close are they to us? Yeah. Well, maybe this might be a uh, second to last question. Do you yeah, want to okay. two more? Yeah, absolutely. So exoplanets, if people don't know, that is an extrasolar planet, a planet that isn't in our solar system. Um, it's not Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto. But it's actually... <laughs> Um, it, around another star. 
So the nearest star to us is called Proxima Centauri, and it's four light years away, 4.2 light years away. And it's got planets around it. And one of those is called Proxima B, and it's a little bit like the Earth. And so there's a planet called Proxima B, and Proxima means like close by, nearby, like proximity. Um, right. So it's nearby to us. And B, because it's the first planet, for some reason there isn't an A, they just call it B, C, D, E, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But, um, <laughs> but they, they actually, um, you know, they have these planets around other stars that we know about. It's quite like the Earth. Um, it may have an atmosphere, it may have oceans, we don't know, it's too right. far away to find out. And the star that it orbits around also has outbursts and it kind of blows radiation out regularly. So we think it might not be a great place to live, but we don't know because we don't know what life might have, like radiation shields. It's pretty exciting to think about though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's going to take a while to get there, but it'd be fun to investigate. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got um, a book this week coming out yes. called Alien, Aliens and Other Worlds. And, oh, you can't see it. Wait, what a segue. Wait. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this. But it's all about other planets and life in our solar system. It literally yes. comes into the bookshops this week. Oh, um, that's so exciting. But, guys, yes. if you do want to get any books signed, I will sign it personally for you. Go on my website, lisaharveysmith.com. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's got heaps of stuff all about Sorry. looking at sky and aliens cool. and all sorts of cool stuff <laughs> oh okay last question because i think yes. this, is a, this is a good one to end on um so callum who's age 10 um uh, knows all about um voyager one and voyager two cool um so when will they get to proxima proxima a or b well they're not going in the right direction firstly oh, which is no. a shame. um but it's do you know what they're going so fast. They're going really, yeah. really fast, but they've only just reached the edge of our solar system. Right. And our solar system is a few light hours away. So that's the distance it takes, for, the distance at which it takes light a few hours to get to. But yeah, right. the nearest star is 4.2 light years away. So if, if it's only traveled hours in light time and it's got to get years away, yeah, um, that's a big difference. So think how many hours in a year. That's a lot of time. 24 yeah. hours in a day, 365 and a quarter days in a year. Several yeah. of those, it's um, a long time. So we've got thousands of years to go before it gets anywhere near the nearest star, even if it was going in the right direction. Yes. So we're not going to talk to aliens anytime soon unless they're hanging around near us. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, if any of them come to visit, <laughs> maybe well, we can... Yeah, have a chat. That sounds great. Sounds cool. Yeah. Anyway, I'm so annoyed that we've run out of time because I could just <sighs> honestly keep talking for well, ages. Maybe because oh. the, the universe is infinite. So maybe yeah. there'll be time another time. <laughs> Definitely. We would love to see you here again. Um, thank you so much for coming to join us. Um, and thank you so much for asking all of our, answering all of our questions. Um, is there any way that people might be able to reach you if they didn't quite get their question Ask yeah, maybe somewhere on Twitter absolutely. or maybe I can get in contact with you um, via your website. your parents, but I've got um, mm -hmm. all social media. So Twitter, and like old people, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll find me under Lisa Harvey Smith or Professor Lisa Harvey Smith on Facebook. Um, awesome. And yeah, get your parents to submit those questions yeah. if they have social accounts. And I'll Definitely. be really happy to um, answer them, especially on Twitter. That's the one I use the most. Yeah, Awesome. And if you can't find any of that, feel free to um, send them through to us and we can pass them along. No worries at all awesome well this has been so much fun um and yeah i learned so much it was really fun um I, we so appreciate you coming to join us um and all of your books are available right now as well and they're really cool i have a few of them right here and i've been flicking through them so including this one which i'm excited about <laughs> <It's nice>. um <laughs> so yeah and your new one comes out this week it does right? this like i think it's tomorrow actually yeah yeah, very, very, exciting. very, very exciting. That's yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks really, really cool. Um, okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. We will catch you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>